it's super bright out here right now but it's such a nice day out i'm outside with this hoodie on it feels nice and crisp out here nothing to complain about this morning man let's get it guys all right guys what's going on everybody my name is marcus welcome back to another video today is going to be kind of like a just a vlog not a day in the life but kind of like a day in the life style video where i just bring you guys along with me and show you guys what i got going on give you a couple of updates uh one of them being about vacation mode and another one just being about a couple of different processes as well as showing you guys a couple of things like sell through rates and um reasons why picking up things that youtubers talk about sometimes may not actually help you in your business on a totally different side note i would gotten this lawnmower from my mom she had it sitting in her in her kitchen in her apartment and uh strangest thing is it didn't smell like gas at all sitting in her kitchen but then i move it to my storage unit and i walk in here this morning the whole place reeks of gas super bad so i gotta get that thing back out of here man it smells like gas in here so bad so i can't have my inventory smelling like gas like some people like the smell of gas because they're weird or some people like the smell of bleach but i ain't taking no chances i had to i gotta air this place out so one of the things that i've been doing differently right since um this whole revamp of the business is number one i come here in the morning and i list my items from the storage unit right number one reason why i'm doing it this way it's a little bit more inconvenient but it actually works out for the better in the long run because when i'm as case in point if you guys watched the video last week where i sold a penn state hoodie that turned out to be black and not blue while i'm here with the inventory on hand when the listers think because sometimes they'll call a green item brown or a brown item green or like a green item gray so now i'll be here on hand with the inventory and i could just check it you know so and so pair of pants green i'll come to the number i'll check the item find out that it's not green it's actually brown then that way i can list the item correctly so that's number one and number two um i've been doing the patreon at seven in the morning uh starting for a couple of days now um it was at 9 a.m central which is kind of a really random and obscure time to start a morning call right so um changed the time to 7 a.m and that's allowed me to do a couple of different things that's allowed me to get up in the morning jump on the call read my bible and even eat some breakfast which i was not able to do before simply because i had lack of time uh so now here i am at the storage getting ready to start my listings and get these items packed up and then jump right into the day's processes so uh i feel like for me it's definitely a game changer because it allows me to have more fluidity in my schedule it allows me to just flow from one process to the other and i don't have to keep leaving here to go to the next task the only time i gotta leave here is to go to the post office and then i, I come back and get right into the the rest of the business beforehand i would come over here in the morning I'd film a what's up video, I'd shoot back to the house to get on the Patreon, then I'd shoot back over here, pack all my items up, then I'd shoot to the post office, and then I'd come back here, and it's just a lot of back and forth, when I could just come here, focus for four or five hours, get everything that I need done, done, and then get out of here for good, and then just go on about the rest of my day, so that's been a real smooth transition for me so far, I'll keep you guys posted on uh, what it develops into, and how things change, or or uh whatever the case may be as we move forward so this is <clears throat> an example of what i was talking about where the the lister called this shirt blue but that's clearly purple i don't know if it looks purple to you guys on camera but that thing is definitely purple so <clears throat> if for instance say that i thought this was also blue but i didn't have the ability to come over here and check it right away say i meant to put it off till later right and then for some reason or another it just slips my mind or i just don't get around to it but the item's already listed and somebody buys it thinking that it's blue but then they get it and they think that it's purple now this is not the great the greatest of examples because in my opinion there's no debate that this is actually a purple shirt but i would feel the same way about the items that are are green and brown like for instance this hoodie they would probably call brown for some reason this is a green hoodie 
like very obviously it's, it's green so i don't know um it just happens quite often um it is what it is but <clears throat> this shirt is pretty cool looking in my opinion and it's just a, a basic t-shirt um with a a graphic print from los algodones baja mexico um pretty cool a guy playing a trumpet or something not trumpet but some type of wind instrument slanging the dreads in the sun get your thing on boy tribal dress all right i'll see you player so uh he big stepping he big stepping with his uh dreads and his and his dress on <laughs> yeah man so uh these are the type of things that i just like to list man it's just different uh it's one-offs me showing you this isn't gonna like ruin the market for me because there isn't very many of these around and if there is very many of these around what are the chances that you're going to find this exact shirt to where this market totally gets saturated on los algodones baja shirt okay guys so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you a tip a pointer some uh, strategies on how you can find basic items right um and then title them when they're unbranded or when they're like on a jersey's tag or a Hanes tag or something like that when it's not a, a sought after brand right how you can make a better title to convert into a sell so for instance this is an american steel shirt it's got a motorcycle bald eagle um american flag kind of graphic um right but it's on a jersey's tag so nothing special with this item right this is not rare this is not something that's going to even go for boatloads of cash. Um, but the thing is, is this still can be sold. So this is the title that I've given it. So you want to do brand, item type, gender, size, color, and then keywords. Right. So the brand is jerseys. But since the brand jerseys is not something that's going to be sought after unless it's like a vintage jerseys blank that's made in the USA, then I would use it as the brand. In this instance, when it's an uh, American still graphic on it, but a jerseys tag, we're going to use the graphic as the brand name to generate to generate this uh, item to show up in search. So we're going to say American still, which is going to be the brand. The item type is a shirt. This is a shirt. The gender is going to be men's. The size is going to be 3XL. The color is black. And then we're putting in these keywords. So we look at the item. We figure out who it's geared towards. This is clearly geared towards someone that likes to ride uh, motorcycles, that loves America, that's into the biker culture, the bald eagle heritage, stuff like that. So uh, definitely going to be someone that's into motorcycles and loves America. So what i did was chose the word motorcycle because i want to catch people that are into motorcycles i put the eagle on there because i want to put i want to catch the eyes of people that love america and american heritage so i chose eagle and then biker core right because this is a biker item this is geared towards bikers and biker core is one of the trending keywords that is uh being searched for by gen z right now and so while this item isn't like a super cool graphic or like a Harley T or something like that, that's going to generate a lot of traction. If I put the proper keywords in it, it'll still rank in the search along with those items. And then I just chose biker. Then I chose rider. And then I just called it a T because that's what it is. And so those are going to be tips that you guys can implement and use in your business to probably generate some uh more eyes more views more listing impressions on your item when it's not a desirable item um this is kind of it goes along with the thing um that kaylee elaine was talking about factor stacking in her video right jersey's tea right not a desirable item not something that someone's gonna you know really be into but when you factor in the stacking of it being a 3xl which is a pretty decent size for uh the biker crowd most biker dudes are pretty burly guys right when you think of a biker you think of like a big big dude with handlebar mustache you know sleeveless vest you know what i mean like big old 25 inch arms you know like you think of a big fella so you got the 3xl you got the american eagle you got the harley on there you got the fact that it's a short sleeve tee and it's a graphic tee at that which graphic tees are trending that kind of never go out of style so that's multiple factors right there on this one item that makes it a desirable item so uh big shout out to kaylee elaine for 
uh, the factor stacking tip. And this is one of the things that, you know, as seasoned resellers, as people that have been doing this for any amount of time that, you know, over a year when you touch hundreds and hundreds of pieces, and you start to notice, okay, I've sold this item before that looks like this item in my hand, but this item in my hand is a horrible brand, but it looks like something of value. Maybe I'll try it out, you know, and when you realize that certain things do sell because of the material, because of the, the, the way it looks, because of the pattern on it, maybe that's going to be a more desirable item. Case in point, Union Bay cargo pants selling like hotcakes, right? But... It's not a great brand at all, but that look is on trend right now. So, you know, you kind of just got to you kind of just got to take the, the experience and just kind of stack it together with uh, test theories to look things up, obviously, but look things up with the keywords like she was doing as well. All right, guys, 50 listings are done. This is the last day that I'm doing 50 listings. I'm going to go up here now. I am on vacation mode right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to promote these listings. Um, 10%. I showed you guys this yesterday. Okay, now they're all promoted. So I'm going to go over here and over here and submit all 50. Then I'm going to take this picture for the Discord. Two out of the 50 didn't update that's okay i'll go in there and do that later so now with that part of the process done um i actually want to get into how the vacation mode's going so far so sales are down obviously as i expected them to be i didn't expect to be able to have the same amount of traction as uh that's normal, right? And so I showed you guys this in yesterday's video where the person had messaged me and asked me, uh, if I buy this now, when can you ship it out? Due to the fact that I had the big banner on my store saying that I was on vacation mode. So I know for a fact it's part of the cause. I'm going to say it's the main cause uh, of the slow sales. Now, what I did have happen was two items sold yesterday one that I listed yesterday and one that was listed on another day. Uh, these items have to go out today, which I'm going to ship all the items that I got going out today. Uh, but they're not due to go out until the 11th of September. The two are supposed to go out today for some weird reason. And thankfully, I had a viewer of the channel tell me in the comment section that I need to refresh the daily listings. I need to not refresh the listings per se, but to go in the time away mode after I list items in the time away, restart the time away and give those new listings time to index into the, the time away mode. I called eBay last night to ask them what's going on with these orders. Why are they taking why are they needing to go out 24 hours from the time that they sold when I'm on vacation mode until the 11th? What am I supposed to do when I hop on a plane and I'm out of the country and now I can't ship these items and they're due to go out the next day? She assured me, as they often do over at eBay, that if this were to happen, that all I'd have to do is to call them and they would remove any defects due to this because I'm on vacation mode. Someone's calling me. So with with me doing these items, these listings while I'm out of town, items getting scheduled live, uh, there's not going to be really much that I can do if this is what's going to happen. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted or whatever and let you know how the outcome of this is going. But so with the sales right now, we have... So I got... 23 orders going out total uh, $75 today at 1046 normally I'm at about 100 to 150 right about now around this time um, so today like I said we're at $75 uh, dollars. yesterday we got up to 409 so uh, Tuesday was 568 Monday was 574 Sunday was 460 so Yesterday was not too far off from Sunday, but then Saturday and Friday were both above 550, which is the daily goal right now is 550. So yesterday I didn't hit the mark and we'll see if today I hit the mark. Uh, 
and I'll let you guys know, obviously, uh, the, the reportings of all this when it's all said and done when I get back into town. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling these orders and, um, I'll show you guys why sometimes it's not worth listening to YouTube resellers for your bolos and certain items. Now you're going to get a boatload of value from YouTube resellers. Don't get me wrong. That's how I learned a lot of the stuff that I know, but the bulk of the, the knowledge that I have comes from going out and just doing the work myself. You can't learn, uh, bolos and stuff like that by just watching YouTube videos with the same way that you can go out and find them on your own, right? Me going to the bins for weeks and weeks. I mean, I've been going to the bins for almost two years now, every week, looking at items, touching and filling fabrics, looking at patterns, looking at prints, um, looking at brands that I've never heard of before, looking at brands that I do know of and finding what inside of those brands generate a good sell, what makes a good item um what's in demand what's on trend what's not on trend anymore and should be left behind and these are things that evolve throughout the course of you know popularity and pop culture and vintage this and vintage that and newfound vintage you know what i mean so while yes you can get a, a boatload of value from youtubers Sometimes you're going to be led astray by someone that doesn't even know what they're talking about or just happen to get lucky or might have found the the one random rare item that does sell for a lot of money. And then you go on a wild goose hunt. Right. So while in my channel, you'll see a ton of, you know, basic bread and butter items, basic. I mean, like Old Navy Gap and Taylor Loft, you know, uh, Talbot's. Um, urban pipeline things like that like these brands are fully totally saturated you can get them you know hand over fist everywhere and most of the time they're not even worth buying but if you can get them from the bins then you're going to make decent money on them right you can pay your bills on ann taylor you can pay your bills on calvin klein uh button up shirts um calvin klein sweaters calvin klein you know sweatshirts eddie bauer you can pay your bills on Eddie Bauer. These are not brands that people are picking up all the time, right? Because the market's totally saturated on it. You're only going to make like $10 off it, $15 off of it. You know what I mean? There's rare items inside those brands that sell for crazy money. Chances are you're not finding them at the bins. Chances are you're not finding them in a thrift. Chances are you, you've you walked right past them, but they want more money for it than what you're willing to pay for it. So you pass on good money. These are things that come with doing this over and over and over every single day in large amounts doing 50 doing 90 a day has given me a tremendous amount of time knowledge experience sorting from high to low looking up comps looking up you know highest sales price plus shipping looking up lowest sales price plus shipping looking at sell through rates that gives you a tremendous amount of experience when you do that every day for a year two years ten years imagine the compounding effect of the knowledge that you'll get by doing your own market research so that's that's what my heart's posture is for you guys to be able to learn how to do this research for yourselves so you'll never have to rely on someone else to feed you right because when you know how to do it yourself you don't need someone to feed you and so that's that's really what i hope for you guys to learn from this channel is how to do this so that way you can be self-sufficient and you don't need someone to hold your hand, right? And I don't mean that in a derogatory way, like you need somebody to, to babysit you. Like, no, like we all need a help. You know, we all need a helper. We all need someone to give us guidance, right? But in school, they teach you out of grades, right? If you don't learn what you're supposed to learn in the first grade, you get held back. If you don't learn what you're supposed to learn in the fifth grade, you get held back. Next thing you know, you're two years older than you need to be in a grade you shouldn't be in anymore. And do you want to be the newborn reseller every single year over and over again? Do you want to be 10 years in the game still making under 10K a month? I'm not throwing shots, but I'm asking, like, is that what you want to be? Because if that's what you want to be, that's fine. No shade. I don't want to be that reseller. I want to get up to making 20K a month. I haven't done that yet. That's what my goal is. So, you know, uh, let me get into some of these uh, items and show you why. All right, guys, so this right here, this sweatshirt is going to be an example of why listening to YouTube resellers is not a good example of where to get your bolo items from. 
So I can be like all day like, yeah, you know, vintage whatever sweatshirts sell for this shirt sold for $17.50, right? So while this is very like niche and eclectic and like obviously homemade, it's like somebody made this Turkey Day sweatshirt, right? And it's on a vintage Hanes tag. So while I could tell you about this stuff, right? How are you going to, when are you going to find this, right? So like while this is very niche and very, um, one time ish this cannot be replicated right so while i've learned that certain things sell well for me case in point this Hanes sweatshirt right here with the weird turkey graphic on it that sells well for me right that sells okay for me now you know it's is it an item that i sell all the time absolutely not but someone out there will buy it right but what are the odds of you going out and finding this and say you do find it how long is it going to take you to find it right you can go out and go out and go out all you want chances of you finding that exact sweatshirt unless you find it from the person i sold it to when they die you'll probably never find that item right so i don't want to send anybody on a wild goose chase i don't sell anything special where's another item i got going out karen scott puffer vest there's nothing special about this guys what did it sell? Karen Scott puffer vest sold for eleven twenty five. What else did I sell? Lands in traditional fit shirt sold for a whopping two eighty six. So, you know the stuff that I'm selling on this channel, guys, is nothing special. Don't come to my channel looking for bolos, right? Because I'm not giving out anything special, right? I'm giving you guys the basic bread and butter stuff that I'm selling. Ann Taylor Loft, you know, Banana Republic, Gap, Old Navy. That's the stuff that pays my bills, right? Now, is that the stuff moving forward that I'm trying to continue picking up? Absolutely not, because the ASPs are very low, straight garbage, right? So I understand that people want to learn what items to pick up. There's no better way to learn what items to pick up than going out and looking up the items that you're looking for. So with that being said, let's look up some sell through rates. So what did I just sell? I just sold some Grey's Anatomy scrub pants. All right, not an awesome item, but it sells all the time. So what we'll do is we'll look up Grey's Anatomy, Grey's Anatomy scrubs. So we'll look up how many there's listed. We've got 6,400 listed. Let's just go to used. So now we have 4,700 listed. Now we'll just type in bottoms because those sell better than the tops do. 1,700 bottoms listed, right? Now, obviously there's variations of color and you know styles. There's athletic, there's jogger, there's straight leg, there's stretch waist. And here goes mine right in the soles, the top one right there in the soles, 651 out of 1700. So 50% sell through almost, right? It's more like a 40% sell through. And I sold mine for a best offer of 950, right? So you see these $15 sold prices and you're like, oh, that's 15 bucks. That's good. When in all actuality, it only sold for 950 because the buyer wanted free shipping because my shipping cost on this is 650. And we got a pair for $19.97 that sold. So they sold theirs for $19.97 with $5.95 shipping. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you can get a little bit more for them. I don't get that much for them. $5.99, $10, $9.99, $16 for three, eleven, twelve, eight bucks. These are more along the lines of success that I have with this brand. You know what I mean? So the sell through, while like you guys might see it sold, you know, or, or whatever, you know, it wasn't, I think I had this listed for, let's just click into the listing. I listed it on the 21st. So it sold in what, 10 days, cause it's the 31st today. So item was listed for 10 days. I took a best offer. So fast sell through kinda, if you title it the right way. If you're not going to do everything inside your business the same way I do it, the same title structure and all that, you can have the same exact item, but you might not sell yours as fast as I do. And that just comes into practice with doing certain things a certain way for the same amount of time or for a long amount of time, right? If I was not, and I don't want to sound like I'm like some great reseller or nothing, but if I wasn't laser focused on 
you know, the categories that I sell in, which is clothing, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with, you know, being an everything seller. You don't have to niche down. You could probably make a boatload of money being an everything seller because you're not pinned down to only going into a thrift store and finding just clothing. But for me, it's just what works. I have a photo set up, set up for clothing. That's set up for clothing. That ain't set up for no hard goods. These flat rate envelopes, these poly mailers, these Tyvek and legal rate envelopes are not meant for selling hard goods. So I don't sell hard goods, right? So uh, Karen Scott, not a great brand. Random Haynes sweatshirt, not something you could find regularly. So, you know, with, at least for me and my channel, you know, um, I don't focus on like trying to, um, what's the words that I'm looking for? So here on my channel, right, my whole thing is teaching you guys how to be better resellers, right? That's what my purpose is. My purpose is to show you how to run your business in a better way to get help you get more items listed more efficiently, right? And that's why me and Bo started this Patreon together. Our goal is to help you reach six figures. It's not necessarily about showing you what to sell because we sell a lot of garbage. And Taylor, you know, uh, Banana Republic, Gap, we're selling a lot of that stuff. Karen Scott, women's plus size tops. You know, <laughs> there's nothing glitzer glamour about it at all. But if you guys want to know the strategies of how to get a bunch of items listed in a day, we can teach you that. If you guys want to know what to do inside your business to to grow from part time to full time or to go from a full time regular career job to part time so you can focus on reselling full time, we can do that. We can help you go further faster and help you replicate the same results that we've had inside of our business to do six figures two years in a row. So um, if that sounds like something that you're into, there is a link in the description, seven day free trial. What do you got to lose? Come get a story view. You can get weekly story views, unlimited story views till you start seeing the results that you're looking for inside your store. I say all that to say that the YouTube reseller community is an awesome community, right? But at the end of the day, we can we can watch channels, we can watch content creators uh, and follow their business models right out of business, right? Me going out looking for the same stuff that Commonwealth Picker picks up or... Um, even Kelly Elaine picks up. That's not my business model. I can't go out and do what they're doing and expect the same business results, the same uh, profits, the same. I just can't do it. It's it's not the same. You can't just replicate someone's business model and have the same exact success unless you do everything 100% the same way that that person does it. So I encourage you guys to not chase bolos, but to seek the actual knowledge of how to pick up quality items. And you don't need anyone to show you what items to pick up, right? It's it's just, there's nothing like going out in the wild, finding an item that you've never heard of, never seen before, and feeling the quality of the material and be like, hmm, this feels different. Maybe I should look this up. And then you look it up and you find out it's a $35 item at the lowest price. That's that's an incredible feeling. Now you've got a brand that you know that sells well and it's got a high ASP. That's a very rewarding feeling, you know? And so that's what I encourage you guys to do is to just go out and put in the work, man. I know I know it gets rough sometimes scanning through hundreds and even thousands of items in a day to only find five of them. Sometimes it's what you gotta do to learn brand knowledge. So this Nike shirt right here sold yesterday after I was on the time away, right? And what does it say? That thing says ship by August 31st, which is today. I was already on time away. So I don't know why I have to ship this out today, but I'm gonna go ahead and ship it anyway. Um, the items that I have listed today, I have to go that I listed earlier in this video. I'm gonna go in there and check and see what the time to ship those are after I ship this item, and I'll let you guys know if it's included on the time away. All right, guys, there is the bag of orders getting ready to go out today. Uh, 
I did just get the notification email for 7,500 subscribers. Sometimes it fluctuates. You got to give it a day to get that actual official email before you celebrate. So I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank every single one of you that's actually subscribed and like, like has been here from day one. Like you guys are OGs. You're the best. And I want to thank the new people that have come along. And I hope that you learned something here. Really do appreciate all the support, guys. You guys are the best. Guys, it smells like so much gas in here from this freaking lawnmower man they catch a, a contact off that man i gotta roll the windows down and just endure the heat you see your boy came out the hoodie so we're getting ready to go to the post office and get these orders dropped off and i'm gonna drop this lawnmower off too man get this thing out of my possession so i'm listening to james my boy and reseller life's channel right now while i do my favorite part of this whole process which is consolidating storage yay uh got two rows of storage cleaned out right now um, and then I'm gonna keep on consolidating probably till I finish out the rest of this shelf right here uh, anyway he's talking about 14 of his items got removed for counterfeit claims and these are basic items guys some of them I even have some of my own listed in the inventory and they're just basic hats like, let me try to find one real quick um, I don't have a John Deere one. He said John Deere is one of them, and then Budweiser is one of them. But I just sold a Budweiser hat the other day. I don't think I'm gonna find one right off the flip. Uh, it's not one. I don't. <clears throat> anyway, John Deere hats, Budweiser hats, and I can't remember the other brand he said right at the top of my head. But they're removing his items. Or eBay's removing his items, saying that these items are counterfeit. So you might want to be careful listing certain items. He doesn't have any defects or you know any any dings against his account uh, account for it Or else they probably would have shut his account down with 17 total uh, within the last couple of days, so Unprecedented uncharted territory we're in right now with these Vero's and removals of items getting ha handed out left and right so like he said there might be some new bot that's doing the scraping for these companies and his items are raising a red flag for some reason so it's kind of scary but at least as of right now there's no no um action being taken over it so we'll see how it turns out okay guys so we spent a lot of time talking about bolos and what to buy but we oftentimes don't talk about what not to buy this is a cleveland cavaliers jersey lebron james right but this thing is super fake and the reason you'll know, number one, is because of the quality of the the lettering. This feels cheap and plasticky, and it's not supposed to feel like that. And then the stitching is really bad on it, too. It's crooked. The loose threads right there, that's not supposed to be there. Um, then if you flip it over, and you look at the, the C, it's distorted and faded and distressed which that's not supposed to be like that either. And then this 23 just looks really crooked and raggedy. The Adidas is really cheaply done and not supposed to be like that either. And then when you look at the tag, that just looks super janky. It's not supposed to be like that. This uh, is just really cheaply done. You can tell it's not made in the Adidas factory. And then the stitching is also crooked on the collar as well. Um, you look down here that just looks to me that looks really qua poor quality look at the nba guy look how crooked his leg is looks like he's got hair blown in the wind that's not supposed to be like that and then there's cheap threads and it's all crooked so these threads right here also this is just really cheaply made and i didn't technically see what i was grabbing i grabbed it and threw it in the cart with all intents of looking it up later and uh or looking at it later and never made it around to it so this is going in the trash but this is something you guys want to watch out for uh luckily it's super light it weighs less than a pound so i'm not going to lose a lot of money on it like you know 50 cents to a dollar max so yeah obviously don't pick up fake jerseys so now the next mission at hand is to go ahead and lay out these items so i can get these photos started and get this day over with all right guys so <clears throat> i'm taking i don't know like 40 45 cents of photos for now um just finish this item right here and i do have to stop and i gotta go 
meet up with my twin brother and grab this suitcase so that I can um, get my uh, stuff packed for this mission trip tomorrow. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about real quick before I end the video is, um, are you one of the sellers that have switched over to cross posting on Poshmark? If so, leave it in the comment section down below how you're doing, right? I'm, I'm hearing all these people and their success stories of like, for instance, uh, Bo sold three items on Poshmark yesterday. And while three isn't very many in a day, that still adds over to your total, total, your total, total, that adds to your overall total of the day, right? So I've been kind of thinking about it, man. I really don't want to have to go to Poshmark. I really don't enjoy selling on Poshmark. And I personally wouldn't be doing the cross listing if I was to hire somebody, I would probably do it. Or if I was to do it, I would probably do like Bo does and have one of his listers just take care of the whole platform for him. And literally all he does is ships the orders. If that was the case, that would probably be the, the route that I go because I don't want to spend time doing anything on Poshmark, nor do I like the platform at all. But if it's going to generate some extra income, then why not, right? So I'm kind of toying. I'm kind of toying with it, man. I really, I really don't want you know to have a bunch of people saying I told you so or anything like that, man. But do keep in mind that I was on Poshmark before I ever was on eBay, and the platform didn't perform well enough. But maybe if I can be open-minded about, I ain't finna do all the extra stuff. No deep hop, none of that other stuff. Uh, but if I can consider adding Poshmark to the and see man i don't know man i'm trying to i'm even trying to talk myself out of it as i'm trying to consider doing it so let me know what your thoughts are let me know what your success is if you were a person that was strictly ebay only ebay and you've recently added poshmark to your reselling regime and if it's gone well for you um i really need to collect some empirical data from you guys as viewers and i don't need people that are just poshmark sellers and they're trying to hype up the platform because they love poshmark i really need people that have been strictly ebay and only ebay up until recently and have switched over to poshmark and have, have added it to their uh way of reselling to make money so let me know what you guys have um what your true um reflection is of the program of the, the program of the platform so yeah i personally have to stop what i'm doing get out of here um go get this bag and then i'll come back and i'll finish these photos but i'm going to end the video here that's going to do it for this one catch you guys on the next one until then let's make this cash guys peace